place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones. And I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. God is faithful, amen? He is faithful. Even when we don't see things happening or changing or moving, He is still faithful. And I don't know who that's for this morning, but I pray that that encourages you.
just what you say Though the storms may come and the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast And let my heart learn when you speak a word It will come to pass Cause great is your faithfulness to me Yes, your faith. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting sea, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Thank you. Though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, stand fast and let my heart burn when you speak a word.
sometimes we got to remind ourselves who we need to put our faith in, who we need to put our trust in, and why we need to do that. Because he's been faithful in the past, and he will continue to be faithful to you. Let's, let's go back into that bridge again. Amen. I put my faith. Come on. I put my faith in. Let me hear you. He's my anchor. He's my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. I put my faith. I'm going to stretch you a little bit. Raise your hand if you've never done it before. Like you know the truth. Come on. Firm foundation. He'll never let me down. When all else fails, who do you turn to? My hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus. I anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation. One more time. He'll never let me One more time. I put my faith.
thank you for what you continue to do in our lives, Lord God. And as I mentioned earlier, I know that sometimes our timing doesn't quite align with your timing, Lord God. I pray that you would just give us faith to trust in your timing, to trust in the work that you're doing when we can't see it, Lord. But thank you, Father. We thank you for this time of worship, Lord God, as a congregation, as a church body, with our friends and family here, and those at home, Lord. I pray that you would have your way in our lives, Lord God. I thank you for the word that will come forth today. May it sit in our hearts, Lord God. And may it sprout something new in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Oasis Christian Center, for joining us for worship this morning. Let's check out what's going on in FYI. Good morning, I'm Destiny, and you're watching FYI. Here are some things we have happening right here at Oasis. Our community groups are a great way to stay connected to the Oasis family. Celebrate Recovery meets every first and third Thursday of the month. Here you can find community and freedom from addiction, hurt, or pain. We are better together, so let's be a support for one another. Registration is required. You can do so by visiting oasisnj.net and selecting the events tab. Takeover Youth will be meeting this Friday at 7.30 p.m. in the main building. Takeover is for anyone from 6th to 12th grade and registration will not be required. You can see a full listing of our community group meetings by visiting oasisnj.net. We'd love to see you join us throughout the week. Please note, masks will be required for all community group meetings and social distancing will be practiced. We want to thank you for your continued generosity. Through it, we are able to bless those around us and spread the message of Jesus to our communities. If you wish to partner with us, you can see the details below on screen. There are three easy ways to You can use our simple text to give service, or you can send a check directly to our office, payable to Oasis Christian Center. If you need prayer support at any time, you can use our prayer request form or live chat feature on our website at oasisnj.net. You can also direct message us on Facebook or Instagram. Don't forget to register for our Sunday services. Registration opens each Sunday at the conclusion of each service. You can register on oasisnj.net and select Sunday registration. Space will be limited and masks will be required for live attendance. As always, you can watch along right at home via our live stream on Facebook or our website. If you register to attend a service and can't make it for any reason, please make sure to cancel your reservation to open up room for those we have on our wait list. Ladies of Oasis, spots for a weekend in the sun in Ocean Grove are filling up quickly. We're over halfway booked, so there's no better time than now to register. The weekend is July 22nd through 25th and costs $150. You can visit oasisnj.net slash wow to register. Men of Oasis, we're so happy to announce our first men's retreat, The Encounter. FML will be heading out to Camp Lebanon for the weekend of May 21st through 23rd. The cost is $155 per person and the limited spots will be filled on a first come, first paid basis. For more information and to register, you can visit oasisnj.net slash encounter. Once again, thank you for joining us today. Amen. Good to see you guys. Whether you're online, whether you're in here, it's good to see faces. Amen. I see half faces, but it's good to see faces. But it is, it is a good time. Uh, and hey, we're, we're so grateful for um, everyone that participates. Uh, I know some of you, whether you're coming on service, coming in person, or whether you're sometimes online, or whatever the case may be. Uh, I was thinking about this this week, and I just want to kind of throw it out. You know, um, I know I, when last year, when we were going through where we didn't have any services, everything was online. And I found myself, I'm a multitasker, I'm sure some of you may be too. And so I, what I started to do was I'm trying to multitask errands and different things while I'm trying to watch the service. You know what I found out? I couldn't do that, right? And we, I mean, we love to do that. I mean, we all like to multitask. And so what I, my challenge is, especially if those of you watching online right now or, or those of you that uh, maybe you do both, is that when we, when we come together for service, I want to challenge you to do this. I, I read an article this week, and, and it, was, it was really good. and inspired me to, to, to say what I'm talking about this. And uh, the fact is to take the time to be like you're in a regular service if you're watching it online. You know, so put down, if you're at home, put down the vacuum cleaner, put, or eat the eggs really fast, and, and, and you know, put a cup of coffee out and watch the thing, but participate in it because what we find is trying to focus on all those things we can't. And so God may be wanting to speak to you. I'm sure, he, I'm sorry, maybe. He wants to speak to you, but I tell you, he's not going to compete with the vacuum cleaner or the eggs or the laundry or all the things that we do. We would need to pull away to stop and allow him to speak into our life. It's no different than even in service, you know. Um, I, I'm sure, and I know none of you guys would ever do this, but, you know, now with everything with phones, you're, you know, you can Bibles on phone, but I'm sure there's a lot of Amazon on orders, orders every now and then that can take place in services on Sunday morning around the country. And I'm telling you, that's still that distraction because I've fallen into it myself. I was at a conference and I remember I was like, oh man, I need to get this. And here I am, I'm starting to order on Amazon while I'm in the service. Okay, the pastor, the preacher, the speaker is speaking. Yeah, I know, I was really bad. So I'm doing it. And then I started thinking, you're doing just the same exact thing that bugs you when people do back home. So put down the phone. And so I did. I was like, oh my gosh, so just as guilty as that. But anyways, uh, we just want you to jump in, be a part of it. So whether you're online or in person, you know, make it a point to do that because that's how you're going to maximize and get the most out of what you're doing. 
And then one other quick thing was this, that uh, in, in signing up, we, we're so grateful for those of you that are part of our services and coming into it. Uh, one thing I just want to remind you to please do, and that is that if you can't make it, which we understand things come up, make sure you cancel your reservations because there's always people waiting to be able to get your seat. And they can't get your seat if you don't cancel. And so I know that happened on Easter, and I was like, oh, where's the, the whole back two sides? And, you know, it happens, but we just, we want people that are, and it, it is frustrating to have to do it this way uh, with the registration. Soon and very soon, we'll be able to move past this, okay? But until then, we need to be able to make it happen. So we want everyone to be able to get in that can, and if something comes up, we understand it. I totally understand. Just cancel as soon as you can so the next person that's waiting for your seat can get in there so that they can be in service. Uh, it would really help. Let's just help everybody be able to connect in the best way they can. Amen. So anyways, it's really about perspective, and I'm talking about perspective today. Um, new perspective of things in our life can totally change our life and what we do. When I, when I, you know, I know myself, when, um, when I became a pastor, all those like couple sentence advice I was giving my dad who was pastoring of what he should do to fix things, all of a sudden, my new perspective in pastoring was like, huh, wow, I really didn't, I didn't know what I was talking about. Because all of a sudden, all of the things that I was advising him, you should do this, you should do that, I would do, if I was pastoring, I would do this, 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 and all these things, even though I always said that I would never pastor. And now I was in that position, and then I found out that, you know what, it's a different scenario when you have a different perspective of it, right? It was a different perspective when Leslie, uh, my late wife, was diagnosed with, with ALS. You know, our, our whole life completely changed. Our perspective on what was valuable and wasn't valuable to do. The things that we were like, wow, this is what we're going to do. All of a sudden, it was like they didn't hold the, the sparkle that they, that they did now. It was, it was a different direction, a different perspective. When before we had kids, and I remember um, before Brittany was born, and which is today's her birthday. Happy birthday, Brittany. So which I can't believe that she's so old and I'm so young. But uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to get in trouble for that comment for sure. But uh, anyways, but I, I remember as a, as a, when we didn't have any kids, and it was like you know, then people that we knew that had kids, it was like, oh, man, they can't do anything. They have, you know. And then all of a sudden you have kids, right? And it's like you find out new perspective on, on, on children. And you start talking, you get together with friends, and you're all you're doing is talking about your, your baby and your kid. Or your, and it's like, you know, before I would never do that. I was like, I, never, I, didn't, I would go with, about with other people, and we would talk, and like, I don't want to hear about your kid. It's like, I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't thought that. New perspective, right? And so, and then, you know, when I, when I became a, a single parent, one was, first was the responsibility to have to do all the things as a single parent. And then actually becoming a single parent after Leslie died, you know, it was like a completely different way of life. You see, I, I had compassion for single moms and dads, and more moms out there than but dads. There are some few single dads out there here and there. And I had compassion for them, but never understood with a different perspective of what, they, what it's like to be a single parent. When you have to do everything, you don't have somebody that you can say, yeah, you, have, you may have family or friends, or maybe you don't, but, but even with all those things, it's all on you. You know, I know my son for a birthday party yesterday, his friend's birthday party, they, they went skydiving. He jumped out of a plane. He's like, Dad, you should do it, which was so cool. I was excited because we were talking in, before service. I've always wanted to do that, you know, but then my Leslie and I, you know, got engaged. She's like, you're definitely not going to jump out of a plane right now. <laughs> and it's like, we just got married. That ain't happening. And then, then she got pregnant. She goes, well, you're definitely not doing it now because you got a baby. You don't, you don't, you don't, you know, you know, and, you know, she wasn't controlling it. But I, I started thinking, oh, I'd be really bad. And then when, when she died and the kids were still young, I, I was like, well, I can't really do it now either because what kind of single parent person would jump out of a plane and leave two kids as an orphan, you know, you know, because you wanted to have a great, you know, so all the things we tell ourselves and, you know, but then Andrew's like, you can do it now, dad. You can jump out of the plane. In other words, we, we, we would take the house and the life insurance policy, jump out of the plane, Dad. That's a <laughs> new perspective, new perspective. Anyways, but no, a new perspective really changes our vision, changes our life, you know, when we, when we have a new, a new vision, a new perspective. You know, throughout the Bible, though, there are numerous references to having a, a, one, a person's eyes open to something, seeing something differently, like to, to seeing through eyes of faith, you know, because what you see in yourself, in your past, in your future— and even in your purpose, gives you insight into who you are as a person now and the insight as a person that you will be. 
You know, when you really look at those things of, of really having new insight, new eyes being opened up, or vision, you know, eye, seeing things through the eye of faith, it changes your perspective. Jesus said it this way. He said in Matthew 6, 22 and 23, he said, the eye, of the, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your he- eye is healthy, your whole body would be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Now, there's a lot in that that we could talk about. He's actually, this is Jesus speaking in the Sermon on the Mount. There's a lot of parables he's giving. This is one of them. This one's actually stuck in between two references where he's talking about money and finances. Some people pull it from there, and you definitely can, t- and going back to the original language, you can pull between generous and, and stingy and those things. But, but I want to pull the aspect of perspective about what we see and how we see. The Passion Translation says it this way, the eyes of your spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being. If your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. So what Jesus is saying, in effect, is that if you actually, if you, um, if you see actually all that it is that God wants to do in your life, if I see what he wants to do and, I, and I, I open up my heart to really embrace what it is that God wants to do in my life, in, in you in your life, that he actually does want to work in your life. There's some people that are so closed. Oh, God can never do anything in me. I don't have any talents and abilities. You know, I look at my past, look at this, look at all these situations. What could ever, God ever do in and through my life? And let me tell you, a ton of stuff if you open up your life, if you just give him the opportunity to work within your life, if you see actually all that God is doing in your life and in the world around you, you will be filled with light. And light meaning hope and peace and, and life, his presence within you. But if you can't see the light, if you can't see what God is doing in your life, then you know what? you're going to be filled with darkness and despair. It's what I allow my, my eyes to see. What, what is the perspective I'm seeing? What is the, the vision that I'm seeing? Because our perspective on things, I mean, standing on the, the you go to New York City and you, know, you're, you, know, you see all the skyscrapers around you and you go, and you're standing up, you're looking up. But if you go into one of those, um, you know, I had a friend that took, was at the edge over there. I've never been there. It's a, so you kind of walk out on glass or something like that. It kind of protrudes outside the building and you look down and you're kind of over the street and all these kind of things. The perspective's a whole lot different up on top of that skyscraper and you're looking down and everybody looks like ants all over the place, you know? And, and it, it, like you see everything. You see, you, know, you see all the way to Long Island. You see all the way to Jersey. You see, you see all over the place. The perspective changes. And many times we're like that. We're, on the, we're like on the, on the street level, and God wants you to see what he sees on the, on the top of the skyscraper when he's looking over all the crowded things, all the busy streets and all the busy skyline and all the things that are there to see what it is that he wants to do. And so that aspect of opening up to really see, say, God, I want to see I want, to, I want to get a glimpse of what you want to do in my life. And that doesn't necessarily mean he just rolls out the whole plan, but that aspect of opening up my mind and my spirit, it, and it really is. And this isn't like some transcendental meditation thing. This isn't some new age guru kind of scenario. That's not what we're talking about. And what I'm talking about is exactly what Jesus is saying, that when, when we look at you know, our life, that you, you, know, you, see, you see the perspective that shapes your life. You see God's power and his presence, his hope, and his peace and his presence. But if I can't see that, if I can't see what God is doing in my life, he said, it's filled with darkness. And there are many people that their life is filled with darkness because they're not opening up to see beyond where they are right now. It's so easy to get surrounded by you where you are. And, and you know, I know with, you know, I, kinda, I shared this last year, at the end of last year when we got back to services, some of the struggles I had gone through and some of the depression and the PTSD and stuff I was dealing with. And, and you know, I remember there was, there, was a, there was a number of weeks it was just, Struggle. I, you know, I had no desire to, for anything. I was, my passion was, I was like, what, what's passion? I'm not passionate about anything. <laughs> I'm just passionate about just sitting in this chair right here and not doing anything. You know, I'm, I'm running like, what could I, could I, you know, if I sold my house, okay, how much could I, how much could I, li- could I even live on that and run anywhere? And, and not that I was, I'm like, what am I want to run? What is it I'm trying to escape from? I didn't even know what I wanted. To, there, you know, there was nothing, no problem. It's just that my life was, it was just, a, it was just all over the place. You know, and it has affected me. It's had residual stuff, that, that, you know, just, you know, with just focus and things like that. It's gotten better, praise God. It's moving, it's getting better. But, you know, I, and new perspective. Now I have a new perspective for people that, that deal with those things. I didn't want to have that perspective, but I have that perspective now. 
But it would be, it was so easy just to kind of encapsulate in that. And when my, I remember when my, my kids kind of got me, we were, we were actually, it was the year before that actually, this has been going on for almost two years. Not as bad as last year, but, and I remember Brittany and Andrew were like, Dad, something's wrong with you. You know, you just, you just like blah. And when, and Brittany said, you know, she's studying medicine, all this stuff like that now, different things and psychology, all these things that she's in in school. And, and she said, Dad, you, you are like, you're like the checkoff list for depression. Like, this is not good. You, you, you've got to do something. You, you've got to change something. And so it, was, it, was, it would have been easy to stay in that, but I had to move out of it, you know. And, and this is what I'm saying, that the more that I, I don't look beyond what things are, beyond, you know, the darkness that's there, it's just that it, the darkness just get darker and darker and darker. And when Jesus talks about the fact of opening up your eyes and looking, and he's not talking necessarily the, the, the eyes, these physical eyeballs, but the eyes of your heart. Those spiritual eyes to see beyond where you are, that God is still working in your life, that he's not done yet, amen? That he still has a plan. He's still moving uh, into our life to give you a different perspective. You know, what you see, your perspective, it shapes what your life becomes. It shapes your attitude. It shapes your actions. It shapes your focus. It shapes your desires. It, it, it shapes the direction of your life. But when it's not clouded by offenses, but when it's not clouded by sin and pride and ego, when there's no obstructions to the direction of the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life, God can work within your life and shape your life and change your life. His word can come alive in my life. But when I cloud it with all those things, that, you know, there, there's people that live their entire life offended. And there are just some people that I think that love to get offended. Maybe it's just a habit. I don't, I don't think they love to get offended, but it's a habit of getting offended. There, I mean, we, and we live in a... Honestly, we live in a culture right now. It's a, I saw a little cartoon. It was the, I forgot what it was. The, the, it was fam, the, fam, the family. It was an old cartoon. And it was the dad saying to the, the little son, he said, so what do you do if you don't get your way? What do you say when you don't get your way? And he wrote up and he said, I'm offended. I was like, doesn't that just say what we live in right now? Because everybody's offended, you know? And listen, there, there are legitimate stuff. But let me just say, the, I, I think it was a lot of what takes place is that if we live offended, we live encapsulated in a prison that does not enable us to be what God has called us to be. When I'm constantly on the edge looking to get, a, and, and someone says something to me or does something to me or, or looks at me a long way, and I'm offended by that, and I don't take care. See, it's, it's one thing about being offended, but the Bible says you, if you're offended, what do you do? You go to your brother, you talk to the brother or sister, you, you take care of it. You don't harbor it. You don't hold it. You don't bake it, Right? You don't let it grow and get bigger and bigger and, 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 and all of that. He goes, no, no, you go and address the situation. You talk about it. You bring it out. Hey, what, what's going on here? If we don't do that, then the darkness, in the sense of what Jesus is talking about, in other words, we're not seeing God's presence in the midst of our life. That gets a lot darker in our life. And his thing is to open up and remove all the obstructions so that the direction and the voice of the Holy Spirit can move and minister within our life. And really, I have to ask, what is it that I'm missing out if, on if my spiritual eyes, the eyes of my spirit, are darkened? What relationships am I missing out on? What opportunities? What, what wisdom? What is, what is God trying to tell me and speak into my life that, that I'm missing because I, I'm closed off and not looking and wanting to grow and, and, and putting myself in a position for God to speak into my life? Listen, you know, 21-year-old Fred, me, when I first started pastoring, is a whole different person than I am now because my perspective changed. I, you know, listen, I would not have been the perfect choice for a pastor at that point, but the difference was this, that my heart was unclouded so God could speak to me, he could shape me, and you know what? He hasn't stopped shaping me all these years. He's still shaping. See, I don't, I don't want to ever stop not growing I don't want to ever get to a point where I feel I know it all or I can't admit my mistakes or admit that, well, that was really bad, you know? Or I should have done this or should have done that because I want to grow. See, it's the moment that I pull it all in and tell you, oh, I've, I've arrived, then what happens? I'm closing out the opportunity for God to speak in my life and my life becomes dark. It becomes isolated. It becomes separated from the presence of God and his voice and the, of the Holy Spirit within my, within my life. It allows me, it, it keeps me from moving forward. You know, um, what have you missed because you have permitted things to darken your spiritual vision? The approach of how we move forward. Matthew 6, 20, 22 and 23, it says it from the message translation. It says, your eyes 
are the windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief. I love that. Open your eyes wide in wonder and belief. Your body or your life fills up with life. And that's not some new age mystical thing, but we're talking about the life-changing, transforming power of God in your life. Not some, you know, dong. No, it is God's power that wants to transform your life. And that, that light he's referring to, it's not some mystical thing. It is the light. When, when, when Christ comes on the scene, everything that is hidden is exposed. Light, it's like when you walk into a room that's dark, you flip on the light, the shadows are like, hey, wait, I'm, I'm not done yet. I, I, I'm, I'm leaving in a minute, you know. No, the shadows go immediately. When we invite the light, the power, the presence of God within our life, his correction, his wisdom, his direction, that the light of Christ that shines in our life, the Holy Spirit pouring in our life, it exposes and shows things in our life so that they can change, so that we can grow, that we can be what God's called us to be. It's not some mystical thing. It's not some manipulative kind of thing that we do. No, it's like when he, we invite him in, when we move the junk that blocks him from shining in our life, our life is changed. Our life is changed. Our perspective is changed. We see things differently. When I, when I first started pastoring, man, I, you know, I thought I knew this, I thought I knew that, but then it was like, thank God that I was, that I, that I was, the heart was that I wanted to learn, that I didn't come in with like, I know it all. There were some times that I thought I did, and thankfully, I got knocked down to size, okay? There's nothing wrong with that every now and then, get re-assessment uh, that, hey, you don't know it all. <laughs> because if I didn't do that, I would never have grown. I wouldn't be standing here today still in a position of wanting to learn and wanting to grow. Because I know I'm not there yet. As long as there's breath in my body, I want to grow. I want to learn. I want to know. I want to be better. Better in what? Better in whatever that God wants me to do. And better when he's leading and directing my life. And, and so I, I love this passage how it says is that your eyes wide open in wonder and belief. You know, when I think about wonder and belief, that's like a, a child in, in wonder and belief. It's like you show the, every, a little, little kid open up a gift. You ever seen something they're excited about and they open up and men, they're like, their eyes are like bugging out and their mouth is like, oh, I'm so, and maybe they're crying or screaming or running around the house. And you see all these like videos sometimes they show of, you know, after Christmas time or whatever. And the little kids are like all screaming and running around and shouting. And what is that? That's wonder and belief. There's an excitement. And I think that that, when Jesus is talking about there needs to be an excitement, a wonder and belief of what, God, you want to do in my life. That it may not be all beautiful right now, but God, you are the one that makes all things beautiful. That Jesus comes in and changes everything. See, it's not just opening your eyes, but opening your eyes wide in wonder and belief, in hope, in faith, in vision, in new or more of whatever it is that God wants to do. It's revelation light, as we read in the Passion Translation. You know, Jesus, when he's talking to his disciples, he was changing their perspective. They think he's coming to set them free from the oppression of the Romans. That's what they're presently dealing with. They're under Roman occupation. And so they see him as the Messiah that's not coming to save their souls and give them eternal life. They see him as the guy that's coming to overthrow the Roman government. And even when, they, when, when two of the disciples said, hey, Jesus, when you, when you get on your throne, where, where, you know, can I sit on the right? Who, you know, can, and can I push everybody away? And, and can I be in this place of honor right here on the right? And Yeah, you can stick him on the left, but I want to be here. There's all this turmoil. A lot of the beginning was the fact that they weren't trying to... They, they, weren't, they didn't understand that he's talking about a, a heavenly kingdom. They're not talking about God's kingdom, his reign, his domain of Jesus dying, and bearing the price of sin on, on, on his body and his life, hold, you know, taking that, and then in his death, defeating death, how in the grave and eternal life. And they, they didn't know all, they weren't understanding all that. They're thinking he's going to get rid of these Romans that are driving us crazy, that are stealing our money and stealing everything and uh, oppressing us. But Jesus is giving them a different perspective. And by the time that he ascends them to the Father, they're no longer, they understand it. Their perspective, he has changed their perspective from seeing it this way to seeing, oh wait, the bigger picture is, is that Jesus came to change the lives of men and women, everybody, no matter who they are, Jew, Greek, Roman, anybody. 
the perspective was changed. And that even took a little while because in the beginning, they were all like, no, it was just for the, for, for the Jewish people. And then God began to use Paul and Paul's going to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people. And they were fighting over that too. Oh no, it's not, it's not for them. They're like, we don't, we don't do anything with the Gentiles and, and, and not understanding. And their perspective had to change to understand that this is for the entire world, for everybody that God loves. So, so all of that to say this, what is it in your life that God wants to work? What is it that we bring it home to our life? Psalms 5 verse 3 says, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait patiently. To live with that expectancy psalmist says here he says god i i bring you my request and i I wait patiently for you you know if we we talk about sometimes with with prayer and stuff like that i I joke about it sometimes it's like you know it's like you have the whole prayer list and think okay you're going to pray for all these things and and you pray and you're oh yeah i'm going to spend 10 minutes in prayer today and you're done in like 45 seconds you've prayed for everybody that you can think of every issue you have you're like what am i going to do with the rest of the you know nine minutes and 15 seconds because there's nothing else i can think of and the psalmist says, what do I do? I wait patiently. In other words, God, it's not just about me telling you what I want and need, but I want to hear what you have. It's that opportunity, that wonder and expectancy that God speak into my heart during this time. Even if I just sit here and don't say, hear or say anything, the fact is that, that you're doing this work within me. I don't know about you, there's been those times where I've just been quiet maybe i've had worship music playing or in the car or whatever or just i was praying and just kind of just turned off my brain my brain thinks a lot you know it's like okay i got this i got that okay done with that check this list okay let's create another li- mental list and, and sometimes you just gotta shut that thing down and wait expectantly to let god speak into you that's that part of that wonder and belief so that God changes our perspectives to see him in a different, to see what it is he wants. Not in a different way, but in a fuller way. It's not that we're going to see God differently. I, I mean, I guess you can in that sense, but, but I want to look at it more fuller. I think he's already started to work in our life, in your life, but he wants to take it deeper. He wants to take it wider. He wants to take it further. But it can't happen unless I start cleaning out the closets, unless I start moving things out of my life. And sometimes that quiet time is the time when all of a sudden, and you may not even realize it, it's like, wow, you know, you start thinking, I need, to, I need to deal with that attitude. I need to get rid of that unforgiveness. Man, I've been offended over this person. I don't even know what I'm offended. I don't even know what they did. I don't know if I did it, they did it, and somebody else did I just know I've been mad and offended for years over there. And I, need, I need to forgive and move on. I need to break that barrier out and move beyond this place. And so... When you open up your eyes, when you open up your heart, you let in hope and confidence and faith and expectancy. When I open up my eyes, when I open up my heart to allow God to speak into there. You say, well, you know, Pastor, I'm I'm, I'm a skeptic, you know, at heart. Then you you need to begin to change that. To be honest with you, I'm kind of a skeptic too. I don't just swallow everything hook, line, and sinker. I'm not going to just drink the Kool-Aid just because he says it's it's the Kool-Aid to drink today. I don't do that. And sometimes I, it's been a battle sometimes because, because faith you, it, it is believing when you don't have all the pieces, right? But I had, so I have to choose a perspective and an expectation that God, your word is true and alive and I'm gonna grab a hold of what your word says. And so over the years, I, I've had to do that. And, you know, and, and I have to expect peace. I have to expect joy and favor and, and blessings and, and, and to be forgiven and to forgive and, and, and for my family to, to, to be what God's called it to be. You know, as a parent, you know, you're always thinking about your kids, depending on how old they are. I, I, I don't know. They say that never changes, you know. You're, my mom was always, she was 80, 83, 84 years old, and she was still telling me what to do. I'm like, Mom... I think I can handle this. But thank you anyways. Thank you for thanking me. Thank you for praying. But you know, yeah, you, yeah, mom, you're right. But you know, and, and so anyways, the point is, is that I have an expectation that God, you're working in those things. You know, it's funny. No, it's not funny. Um, but that, I said earlier that that thing about the fact is knowing when we miss it and not allowing that to rule, ruin our life. You know, there's times that I made wrong decisions and choices and and I could either say, well, forget this. I'm just, I'm quitting because, man, that was a stupid decision. And I'm just going to bail and, and run. Or I'm going to say, God, you know what? I give this to you. You're going to take this and you're going to move forward. We're going we're gonna to go forward in this. Now, last, last Sunday was Easter, right? Remember that? We had four services, pretty exciting, you know, 
two on Saturday, two on Sunday. I mean, it's a big start for where we've been in the middle of this whole pandemic thing. I was like, a little bit. I was like, wow, you know, we had to add an extra ser- Saturday service. So we're getting ready. And, and so um, now I've been studying, preparing for this and all these things like that. And so here I am. Uh, we are uh, in the first service on Saturday night. And were any, who, was anybody in this, this service that you were here that first service Saturday night? God bless you. Okay. Why do I say this? I don't know what happened to me that night. But I could not wait to get off of this platform. Because my, I, was, I made a mess, in my opinion. And maybe I, I always think that, you know, that God can work through any mess. But I don't know what was going on. I, mean, my, I couldn't focus. My, my brain was all over the place. And, you know, I'm up here having a conversation, not in a crazy kind of way. But I'm like, like, I'm like how do I, what do I do? You know, I just felt, I just felt like it, the, the ground, it was like quicksand and I was going under. And it was like, I couldn't wait for the little timer to like be stop and me to get to the end of my notes. It was that bad. I, I, you know, it got better near the half. In me. Now maybe some, maybe you thought, no, Pastor, that was perfect. If so, God bless you. You maybe you were sleeping. I don't know. Maybe you took some allergy medication before and you were a little, uh, a little out of it. I don't know, or or whatever. Maybe it was okay. But for me, I know when I got up up, up for this platform and when it was done, and I walked in the back and man, I was just like, oh my gosh, I have three more to do. That's all I could think. And what am I going to do? And I was, I was crushed. I mean, because like, you can't just like put pause. I'll be right back. It doesn't work that way. You got to keep going, right? You know. And when you start to feel that you're bombing, and, and listen, and I, I'm, try, I'm not trying to make this. It sounds really bad, part of the way. And some people are like, "Oh no, it's a spiritual. It's hallelujah. It's spiritual. It's all." You're still working with your brain, and things are still working, and God works through you. But when your brain is screaming at you, you are bombing. You are making a mess of this message. Man, it's like all your emotions. I just, I just remember it was like, ah, and I got in the back and I was talking to Warren. Was back, I think you were back there. And I was like, oh my gosh. I said, like, how bad was that? How bad was that? He was like, it wasn't that bad. I'm like, you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. And two of the different pastors came in there and they at different times, like, hey, just how you doing? I was like, you know, we must have been really bad for them to come back here and check on me because... That never happens, you know. <laughs> and, but, you know, it's like Pastor Peter was the last one. He just came in. He said, I'm just checking on you. And I was like, yeah, I said, can you pray? I, he said, can we pray for you? Because at this point, like, if, now it's not just a spiritual thing. It's an emotional battle. And I'm sure you may have been in that in your life. Why am I telling this? I, most people would never ever tell, talk about this. But you know what? If I don't talk about this, and you're not going to know the reality of, of no matter, like, you can be up here. You can be in the middle of doing something for God here or wherever you are. And, man, it's like, feel like you are sinking and you know it, it probably was pretty bad I don't yeah I just think it was you say oh no it wasn't it wasn't bad it, it wasn't bad because God can do anything but for me I knew I was sinking fast okay and, just, and then the problem is that it affects everything and I remember Pastor Peter he, he prayed for me and you know some of the other guys did too he wasn't the only one he was the last one out you know that before we got to the next service and I was just so grateful for the people in my life that came back to make sure that I was okay and encourage me and, and to say, hey, you, you're, you're, you're okay. God's got this. And you know what? He really did. And, and whether it, I don't, the next service, maybe it was the same thing, but I didn't feel it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I felt like, okay, God, you got this. And what, it, what is that? That is the choice between letting the darkness of all of that encompass you and pull you down as opposed to opening up your heart your spiritual heart and your eyes to let God speak in your life. That no matter what, and, and also to know that no matter what happened in that service, that God, you're moving in it. That you can do, you can work beyond my deficiencies and any deficiency we have. Because we all have them. Sometimes they're manifest a little bit more than, <laughs> than other times. But the, but the point is, it was, it, was a, it was a changing moment for me. It was like, okay, God, you, you, you're doing this. And that emotional part that which is overwhelming me then he just took it away. And I remember I stepped out the, the next service and we started it. And, and man, I, I, felt, I felt fine. And it was at the point that, okay, God, you, you've got this. Now, I don't know why I felt like that when, before that. And I'm just sharing it to be open and honest with you guys because when you're at that, you, you can't throw the towel in because God's not done. You still got to go forward. You still, listen, you've got still got to be mom and dad. You got to still be the brother or sister. You still got to be the, whatever it is that you do in life and whatever you're doing for God and all those things like that, you still got to move forward. And you got to know that 
when you feel like just allowing that darkness just to overwhelm you and pull you down, that you open up and say, God, here, you, God, I'm giving you this, this train wreck. <laughs> and God can make beautiful things out of train wrecks. Amen. Amen. And he really, on it. but that's the perspective. So I have to see that. <clears throat> Paul said it this way. Philippians 4, 12 through 13, he said, I know how to be, a, this is the ampl- amplified, I know how to be abased and live humbly in, straightened circum- in strained circumstances. I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going without and being in want. Listen, life is full of like plenty and nothing. I mean, we all go through those seasons. Things are good, things are really bad. Things are good, things are really bad. And we all, wouldn't you love if it just was good all the time? But the reality, it's not. So Paul gives, the Apostle Paul gives this perspective when he's saying, listen, he's saying to the writers of the church of Philippi, I've been on both ends. There's times I've had plenty to eat and there's been abundance around me. And there's other times I had nothing to eat. And his perspective, he says, but the point he says, I, I know how, he says, I, I understand the secret of facing every situation. He says in verse 13, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I love that picture that, I'm, that he infuses inner strength into me and I'm self-sufficient. In, Christ. in other words, I don't need anything else to help me get through this but him right now. Because once he gets this in my life, then it enables me to move forward and move beyond that, whatever your situation may be. See, no matter the situation, Paul lived with an expectancy, a hope, a faith, vision, determination in the life that God had for him. He literally did open up his eyes wide in wonder and believed that God would have this and he filled him with light to be able to do whatever he's called to do. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He knew that what God had called him to do, that he would be empowered with whatever he needed to do. And honestly, that's the thing that I, that I come back to for myself when I have those days when I just, as a pastoring, that you just feel like, wow. And, and, and as, a, as a dad, <laughs> uh, as, as a friend, as a, a son, when I was a son to my mom or my dad, when I miss the mark, to come back to the point that whatever, whatever position I'm fulfilling, God, that you, that, that you place me in, and when I feel like I'm, I'm losing out or it's not, it's not working, I come back to the fact that I know that you've promised that you give me the strength to get through every one of these things. It's not my strength, but your strength that enables me to move forward in that and see it happen. See, what the eyes of your spirit see, your perspective determines what fills your life. When I focus on this, Paul says that what I do when I'm, all those things are going, I'm focusing on the fact that it's not my strength, but Christ in me. That he's the strength that enables me to move forward in that. See, everyone has a, a perspective, has a view, but not every perspective is a good one. Now, I'm like kind of beyond my, my time here now, so I'm going to go really quick because I have like a whole another 30 minutes, it looks like, from this uh, notes. But anyways, we won't, we won't do that. But I just want to share this. So you don't have to be around a person very long to hear their perspective. You can hang out with somebody and just let them talk a little bit. And you know, a lot of times you know exactly where they stand and where they're coming from. And so you, you don't have to, uh, and so I, I have to make it, you have to make it your goal to surround yourself with people who have good eyes in the sense of what we're talking about. Faith, hope, vision, confidence. If I want to grow and I'm not telling you to eliminate your negative friends. I'm just simply saying, who's influencing your life? Who's helping build your perspective? You need people that will help encourage you to walk in faith, walk in hope, and have a godly perspective in your life and in the direction that you're going in that. And when we do that, we move forward in that, then we begin to build up our spirit, that begin to build up your strength in, in, in the things of God so that you can move forward. And, and it's kind of like this. Why would you journey through life with people who speak in your life that, that have bad eyes, you know, bl- that are blindfolded in that sense. If someone is blindfolded, oh yeah, I'm just going to follow you. Would you follow a blindfolded person? Okay, we're going to go, we're gonna go you know, walk, you know, walk around the city. No, you, you, you want to take the blindfold off, please? But many of us are like following 
every word that someone that is completely spiritually blindfolded and taking it into our life. And, and as I said, I'm not saying that you get rid of people. That's not what I'm saying. It's who's, who holds the key to the influence in your life. We all have people that influence our life, that influence our perspective. Who has the right to speak into your life to change that perspective? You know, I had to really make it a point many years ago to look and say, okay, who, who am I allowing to speak into my life? Who's the perspective I'm allowing to speak into my life? And, you know, there's some people that I'm, that I'm friends with, but you know what? I had to shift in me that just because they said this or said that, that, you know, it, maybe it, it's okay, maybe I take it, maybe not, but I'm not going to let that direct my life. I'm not let their opinion or their issues and things like that. Can see, some, some people are just so controlled by people, like what they think and what they say. You know, there's things that you know that God wants to do in your life, but you can't because you're afraid of what so-and-so is going to say. Don't ever give anybody that power over your life, except for God. Amen? He needs to be the final voice in your life, his word in your life. And so Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 said, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Now, please don't go tell anybody that we called your friends fools. That's not, the per- that's not what we're saying here. But what I'm saying is the fact is who's influenced your life. Your, your first perspective is not always the best one. Many times the things that we think, you know, whatever the perspective we first see, most people want everyone to see their perspective. But I think it's the point that but we need to position ourselves to get the best perspective in our life. Amen? Uh, so anyways, um, if your perspective is not the right one, drop it and align it with the right one. Amen? Some people will live and die. Well, this is what I think and this is what I say. But, but, but you know you're wrong and you're still fighting to be wrong. And when you're doing that, you're doing just what Jesus said. He says, you're living in darkness. He wants to flood your life with light so that it changes your life and yet you're still moving forward in that. So choose the perspective that you're going to follow. You know, I know myself, like I said, I've had my off moments. We all have our off moments, but I eventually direct my vision, my perspective to the right direction. I choose how I'm going to respond. Maybe your history growing up, maybe it was a negative aspect, maybe it was a heartbreak, maybe it was mistrust, whatever it may be, but my, my challenge is you don't have to live with that history. You can pick a new perspective. You don't have to live, well, that was my past. Okay, we understand that, but you know what? The Bible says that you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away. Behold, all things are made brand new. You don't have to quit living like what Jesus has already paid the price for. You pick on a new perspective. You know, be on the, the, the person who God's calling you to do, what he wants to do in your life. He, Jesus has paid the price for you, so grab a hold of that, run forward of it. See, I, I choose my perspective based on where I want to go, in life, ministry, family, I, I, to, to walk with God. I, I anchor my values. I choose my perspective. I choose my eyesight and which direction I'm going so that I can be the person that God's called me to be. I make a decision to say, God, I choose this. I choose to, 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 to you know, I'm, I'm big on the fact that, it, it, you know, with, when it comes to like communication and things like that and, 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 and how, what I say, I choose my words wisely in what I say. I don't just flippantly throw words out there because I know, I know words are powerful. And when I understood that, it changed my perspective. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. When I understood that, I made sure that I watch what I say, how I say, how I talk to people. It changed my perspective because I could be speaking death to somebody or life to somebody. I wanted to speak life to somebody. See, these are, I'm just kind of throwing a bunch of little things that I can't, don't have time to really go into, but these are th- those little nuggets that I wanted to throw out here. In your life, you, you're giving life, you're giving hope, you're giving purpose, but by what we say, I, I need to choose perspective. I need to... To choose the values. I need to choose the things I, I, I choose to move forward. When, when you look at your past and all you see is heartbreak, disappointment, hurt, and despair. You know, but when God looks at your past, he sees mercy. When God looks at your past, he sees grace. He sees forgiveness. God sees his hand at work in your life even when you weren't aware of it. He saw his hand working in the midst of you. When we look at our future, we may see nothing but uncertainty, fearfulness of what lies ahead, but God sees your future filled with his light, empowered with a promise and a hope. So, as I close this out, let's look at the future through the perspective of promise. What if you looked at your future? But pastor, you don't know my situation. I understand. But what I'm trying to do is us to raise that up and look beyond that. There's been so many challenges that I've dealt with in my life and our family personally, 
But I had to constantly make the decision. This is where it is. I'm not ignoring where things are, but I had to look up and beyond where we are that God, you're still working. You still have a goal. You're still moving. And I choose to believe that. You know what? And that's the only thing that's kept me from the ability to be able to move beyond and see move forward. So let's look at the future through the perspective of promise. Let's look at today through the perspective of God's presence. Just like Paul, he said that no matter what I go through, he understood, Jesus, you're with me. You're seeing me through in this. See, that's, to, that's today's perspective. See, for myself, there's those days that I have to know that God, <laughs> my perspective is that you're with me and you're seeing me through. Let's see your life through the, uh, let's, see, let's see our life through the eyes of faith. Faith in God's mercy, in his promise, and in his power, and in his presence. Amen? Let that shape our life. Let it shape our, our hope and purpose. As I, I'll read this as we close. The eye is the lamp of the body, Jesus said. When your eyes are good, in other words, when you, when you see as you should, your life is filled with light. And that's the life that God wants to work in into your life. So your homework this week, just look at the areas. Find those areas that you need to let some light of, of Christ shining in and through those things. Amen? Shape some things. New perspective. Maybe some people, you need to begin to see them in a different way. You wrote them off. Maybe God wants you to see them in a better, different way. Amen? Just saying, I don't know. Would you stand? Let me pray for you guys. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for your power, your presence. Lord, let us just begin to see our hearts opened up with wonder and belief. And Father, that you want to work in and through us in all that we do. That Father, there's things you want to do in our life. You're not done yet. Father, there are those that are here today that maybe they've written themselves off. Maybe they've, they've said, hey, you know, I can't be this. I can't do that. But Father, I thank you that Jesus came to give life and new life. That the old has passed away. Behold, all things are made brand new. Father, I thank you today that we begin to look at our future with promise that you are in our life and there's things you still want to do in and through us that today that we have the strength to do whatever we need to do, that you are leading and guiding and, and providing and with us in every moment because, because you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Let us take your perspective in seeing our life and moving forward to be the blessing to others that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, if you need prayer, we'd love to pray with you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you also for your giving and all that you do, support.